Hey guys, what's up? It's Stacking Chairs, youth ministry podcast all about serving in youth ministry. Whether it be youth group or youth camp, whatever God has you serving in, that's what we're talking about. I'm one of your hosts, Josh Paul Hamus. I'm joined by my fellow host and good friend, Kyle Gray. Josh, it is good to be back. We're back in the we're new back year. In the new year. Josh, I feel like I haven't seen you in a year. Oh my goodness, yeah. you haven't. What a youth wow. leader joke to make. Or a dad joke, I guess. <laughs> so I heard a good moment. dad joke while I was away on, on vacation. Did you? Yeah, can I share it? Please. Okay. Uh, a man goes into a, to see his doctor. And he says, doctor, doctor, I was bit by a wolf. And the doctor says, where? And he says, no, just the normal kind. <laughs> that is a dead joke. <laughs> How do you cut this out like live? You know? <laughs> yeah, you, you can't. Cut it from my mind. Yeah, you can't. It, that will be, I, I promise you before the day is over, you will have yeah. the desire to share that joke with somebody. I probably will. That's, <laughs> that's just like my bane. <laughs> Is because of Wolf being Spain. Dad, Wolf Spain. Full yeah. circle. Wow. All Josh, ties. we're in a new setup. Yeah. New new situation. We got this, this, um, I this like cool it. table. Now we can have more friends. Yeah, the leaves fold out. Like, Oh. Yeah, it's pretty cool. If, if you can't see it, you can see it on our YouTube channel now. Hey, by the way, reminder, you can watch us and not just listen to us. Yes. And so Kyle and I are sitting across from each other, directly across from yeah. each other now. Which I feel is, like we're on the opposite side of the table. On this. Yeah, I really feel like we're split. Yeah. Yeah. But then you'll see we we got some we got the chair set up differently in here mm -hmm. and I those signs are actually I I took that from admissions I got to return it choose so, happy yes yeah, this is choose happy and up there. and why is that one up? <laughs> there's Dylan Franklin's <laughs> most likely to never leave Word of Life yeah uh, award that he got in <laughs> in first year yeah yeah I just found it and which I which actually stuff up. wasn't true. Yeah, he left for a year. He did. He did leave for a year. So uh, a, a good friend of ours, Dylan, he actually works on the other side of the camera over there. Yep. Uh, he he left for a year, and but now he's back. Well, but like, can I ask you a question? Please. He kind of worked remotely. He did. He, so it's kind of like the whole idea of somebody once said to me, do you realize that once yeah. you start clapping in your life, you're literally clapping for the rest of your life just with more space in between each clapping set? <laughs> Who told you this? I don't know, but it literally <laughs> made my mind go, oh my goodness. Yeah, so Dylan just so like Dylan, had a long respite yeah, of clapping. He had a, yeah, he had a long, but but he came back and he did Pursuit Camp. Yeah, yeah, and he then was always he, back. And then he came back and he did Summer. Yeah. He did projects for yeah. us. And now and now he's leading the, the marketing team down here and doing a fantastic job. Fantastic. Anyway. Out of all the marketing coordinators that were in Florida, he was one of them. <laughs> okay, because I did it for a little while, so I, was, I thought he was going to throw me under here. Um. So Kyle, tell me, what'd you do for, for Christmas? And uh, uh, when did you go see family? Yeah. Uh, spend some time with family. I mean, I knew, but I, I wanted them yeah. to know. You share with our friends. Yeah. You know. Do I need to look at them? Well, it, if you can't, if you're, if you're, uh, if you're driving right now, don't close your eyes and imagine Kyle. Looking yeah. at you. Just yeah. like we said, don't, <laughs> don't close your eyes and pray. Yeah. So no, it's good. You got to go see some family, I, family. Um, you're either, it's either feast or famine, man. You're either like, okay, guys, we got to be up by eight o'clock in the morning. We got to be out the door by eight Oh five. We got to be doing this. Bah, 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 bah. And I'm like, Whoa, I'm on vacation. And then there's other days where it's like, you don't do anything. And you're like, yeah. okay, I know I'm on vacation, but like, I got to do something. Yeah. So well, it's cause I think, I think we, as, uh, as just humans, we just, we can't vacation for that long. Yeah. I mean, at least me personally, I, I took two weeks off and it was, it was great. Like I, I was so thankful to spend time with my, my wife's family who were yeah. in town, but Boy, by the end of it, I was like, I need to get back to work. So there are normally when I space out my, my vacation days, mm -hmm. um, I'll keep uh, like, I'll use a couple so that when I go on vacation, yeah, specifically for Christmas vacation, you can get some, stuff I have done. to like, okay, I've got to step away and I have to work here and there. Yeah. And this time I was like, no, I'm not going to do that at all. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to just be on vacation. And honestly, there were some times that I was like, man, I, 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 I wanted to go in and work and get some stuff just fun. because I just, in, yeah. there's, I enjoy what I do. Yeah, no, I get that. I totally get that. Uh, yeah. So then, yeah, I mean the same thing with me. I just had, I had family in town the whole time. We went to Orlando for, for a week before Christmas. Would you rather stay in town or leave? I am, I am, I'm a homebody to a fault, like to a definite fault. Mm -hmm. Like I would, so growing up, all my family lived within 20 minutes of each mm -hmm. other. So we'd go and see both sets of grandparents on Christmas day right. and you'd spend the day with everybody and then right. you'd go home. Right. So in my mind, that's like the perfect like holiday. Right. So staying home, no, but also not staying home for only like a day at a time yeah. is kind of like my perfect like holiday. We used to have this thing that, um, so I am one of like 26 or 27 grandchildren. Siblings? Oh. No, <laughs> siblings. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. Nope. 
And, um, and so we would all get together with my mom's side. That's just on my mom's side of the family. Oh, and wow. so, Jeez. yeah. <clears throat> and so Wait, how many aunts and uncles did you have? I had, so my grandpa used to say this all the time. I had six children and all of them were boys except for the first five. <laughs> so you had five aunts and, and one uncle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or four aunts. Cause no, well, yeah. Cause my mom's not right. an aunt. Um, yeah. but, uh, but we would get together with everybody yeah. and it was, it was one of the highlights of my Christmas season yeah. and it just was fun. You guys were all there in Pennsylvania. Oh, well, or we'd go to my, my family in New Jersey or sure. sometimes, and we would go various places, but primarily it was because my grandparents lived in New Jersey Oh, okay. For a while, and then they moved to Pennsylvania. Actually, they moved to Maryland, then Pennsylvania. Long history, none of y'all really. I'm glad I'm, I, I'm glad we got that middle yeah, part. Yeah. <laughs> Vitally important. If you hadn't told me they moved to Maryland, I yeah. think I would have just known you, you were been a liar like, for the rest of your life. <laughs> you would have been like, there's another spot of your life that you're not talking I about. I would have been at your funeral, and they would have asked me to, to share, and I would have been like, I don't want to share. He, I, I, he I, feel like, I feel like I don't know him. Yeah, he lied know? to me about that um, Maryland thing. But, uh, but it was just a joy. And so like, there's part of that, that now we get together with my side of the family, mm -hmm. um, you know, for Thanksgiving yeah. or my side of the family for Christmas, mm -hmm. my in-laws in Bermuda do not celebrate Thanksgiving. Um, oh yeah, no, they wouldn't. Yeah. They have when we've been around them, but sure. you know, um, just like a fun little thing. Yeah. And so, but there's, there's something every once in a while, every once in a while, yeah. I'm like, ah, I wish I could get back together with that whole, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it just was. It was beautiful chaos. Yeah, no, I miss it. I totally understand that. Yeah. Yeah, I still miss it. It's, but it is nice. Like I always say to Mela, like, you know, you have your culture that you grew up in. I have my culture that I grew up in, but we're building a new culture together, our family together. Yeah. And so, you know, we're going to build new memories. We're going to build new traditions. Yeah. And it is hard. Like it's hard to not just like. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, this podcast is about youth ministry, but <laughs> we're just like reminiscing. Well, but we're talking about families. <laughs> yeah. And that's a good and, segue, right? And being involved with families yeah. and having different things that are going on with families. And so, Josh, we actually got this question. Yeah. Our, from our friend, one of our listeners. Our, yeah. Danny M. Thank you for writing in. He had a question about how do you handle or what do you do? Uh, and um, we're just going to take the premise of his question of just having parents as youth leaders. And we're going to run with that question. Right. Right. Um, so Kyle, have you ever experienced having a parent as a youth leader, either as a, as a kid or as a youth leader yourself? Or? Oh, absolutely. So yeah. I, I, um, when we moved churches from, by the Maryland, way, great question. From, yeah, Mar yeah. from Maryland. From Maryland. Yeah. <laughs> from Maryland. <laughs> what? I didn't know about Maryland. Um, uh, we moved when I was in fifth grade, when I'd finished fifth grade. And yeah. so when I got into sixth grade, we were stepping into this new church. <clears throat> and um, uh, so I never got to experience youth ministry at the old church. Mm -hmm. But uh, to my knowledge, they were just lay people, just parents, just yeah college kids that just said, Hey, we will step up. We will be the youth leaders. Well, then this, yeah. this church in Pennsylvania that I grew up in, that I spent my teenage years with, that's what it was for the mass majority of my, uh, uh of my time. <clears throat> now the, the guy that eventually became kind of the lead youth pastor role. Um, he still started out as just a guy that was like, I will take over the youth ministry. Yeah. Um, awesome. There, there's no doubt in my mind that those, those parents, those youth leaders mm -hmm. made a significant impact in my life because guess what, Josh? They didn't have to be there. Yeah, yeah. They were there because they wanted to. Yeah. I don't think I've realized that en soon enough. Yeah, I don't, well, that was actually, I was writing down quick because I was thinking like, uh, my perspective on parents serving as youth leaders is different than it was when I was in high school probably now. Oh, yeah. Because, oh, yeah. because as a kid, I'm just like looking and I'm like, oh, it's just completely different mindset. And yeah. so the same thing, like you don't realize it until you're older and you're looking back and you're thinking, okay, this is how this could have affected me negatively. This is how it could have affected me positively. This is how it actually affected me and trying to like figure that out because then you have to apply it to how am I going to make these decisions to right. then either involve or not involve parents in, and we always say like, Involve your parents in your youth ministry. You should, right? yeah. yeah. And have a planning meeting. And have a planning hey, meeting. how about you? Did you have parents involved in your youth ministry? Yeah, so uh, my cousins, actually, so my uncle and my aunts helped lead youth group. And so before I was in youth group, uh, my uncle Bob was the, like, lead youth leader. Yeah. 
You had an uncle Bob too, right? The, no, my, my dad's name is Bob. Oh, that's right. That's right. That's yeah. right. Okay. So, uh, my uncle Bob would lead the youth group and my aunt Jody was there too, helping lead the youth group. But my uncle Bob led the youth group. And then when we came in, I think is when pastor Matt mm. came in. Yeah. And so uncle Bob and aunt Jody, you know, they stayed yeah. serving as youth leaders as a lot as well with, uh, with my, my pastor's wife, uh, Jenny and, um, they were all awesome. Mm. They were all amazing. Loved interacting with all of them. I remember like coming to them as the youth leader and having a different connection with them than I did with my youth pastor. Right. Which was really cool. <clears throat> um, but my uncle Bob, yeah, he like led the youth group for years and did an amazing job. And then I don't know if it was because we came up, my cousin Cassie and I were in the same grade. So yeah. I don't know if it was because we came up that, that we had a youth pastor then, or it just could have been just coincidental timing. They're like, hey guys, Josh, Josh is about to step in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got to get some professional help in here. <laughs> that actually wouldn't surprise me. <laughs> um, but no, it was, it was great. Like, I don't, I don't ever remember having like a negative thought about it. I always remember it seeing it as a positive thing so, all so, the way through. So think about this. Pause for a second. Preschool ministry. Mm -hmm. Have you, has there ever been the question that's come up? Should parents be involved in preschool ministry? Oh, good point. Yeah. I, I don't yeah. think children's ministry yeah. has the, has the question ever come up? Yeah. So now let me paint for you two pictures mm -hmm. because I know many a youth ministry. Finger paint two pictures. Many. Because, yeah. Children's ministry. Yeah. Finger youth paint. ministries that say after you graduate from the youth ministry, mm -hmm. you need to take my wife's, my wife's church is one of these. You have to wait for at least, I think it's a year or two years before you oh, come yeah. back to serve in that youth ministry. Yeah. Now I, I've heard, I've heard some people say four to five years. That's, so that way you cycle out an that, entire that, high school. Yeah, which that to me, that to me, in my personal opinion, too that's much. a little, that's a yeah, little too much. That is a lot. But, it, but it's, it's philosophy, it's perspective. Yeah, it also depends on the kid too. It absolutely depends on the kid. Yeah. You know, how do you, how, how do you look at this kid and go, you're in youth ministry. We're, we're going to teach you and train you how to serve in youth ministry. Yeah. And then after you graduate, just so you know, you don't have a spot to serve here anymore. Yeah. You know, like best case scenario, I, I've come across a couple of churches that, that have, in my opinion, mm -hmm. have just done it really, really well, where they've started with their fourth, fifth and sixth graders and said, Hey, let's start to train them in areas of the ministry of the church. Yeah. 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 Let's have them actually serve in the children's ministry mm -hmm. and actually serve Sometimes on Sundays, not on, okay, guys, it's kids Sunday. Let's yeah, no, yeah. no, no, no. Like I've watched 13 year old boys standing in the, the audio booth. And I'm like, that's the coolest thing in the yeah. world. Yeah. I because started now, to do that a while back. I need to, I need to get the guys back in. Because there. now then when that kid graduates high school, if, yeah. if he's going, well, I don't have to have a spot in the, in the big church. And if those people there make him feel like there's not a spot in that big church, and then we ask the question, why are we losing so many young people? Yeah. Yeah. You know? Well, because we're treating them like, like, maybe this is, maybe this is an interesting thought, but do we treat our, our kids as like a ministry acceptance or an acceptor, like someone who gets ministered to and not someone who can minister? I think, is that why? Possibly. I think Possibly. That, I, I, I know, I know for years I would hear guys say to youth ministries, even to children's ministry, Hey, you're the church of tomorrow. I understand where they're coming from. I, I don't think yeah. there was ever a guy that stood up that wanted those kids to feel like you are not a part of the church today. You yeah. haven't sat through membership class. You have, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think that's their perspective at all. No, but I, sometimes it can come across of, of no, you will merely be in leadership of tomorrow. You're a part yeah. of the church today. Yeah, absolutely. You're involved in that thing today, yeah. you know? So um, what's that look like having like the parents come alongside those kids while they're trying to figure that out? That's what know? I think we're, we're talking about. Today. Well, yeah, yeah. Obviously. So, so I thought, I thought we'd, we'd look at scripture cause I want to make yeah. sure that we're not just talking about our opinions, our philosophy, sure. our scripture. So the big passage that everybody goes to is the Deuteronomy six passage, yeah. uh, which says, and I'm, I'm going to read it, um, out of the new American standard. It says, you shall love the Lord, your God, starting in verse five, Deuteronomy chapter six, verse five, uh, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your, your might. Those were these words, which I am commanding you today shall be on your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your sons and you shall talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way, and when you lie down and when you rise up, you shall bind them as a sign on your forehead and they shall be as frontal or on, on your hand and they shall be as frontals on your forehead. You shall write them on the doorposts of your house and, and on your gates. 
Then it shall come about when the Lord, your God brings you into the land, which he swore to you, to your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give you to a great land and splendid cities, which you did not build houses that you full of good things that you did not fill cisterns that you did not dig vineyards and olive trees that you did not plant and you eat and you're satisfied. Watch that you do not forget. And then it goes on later on and it says, Hey, when your sons and daughters ask you of how did we end up here? Hey, and what are these great monuments? You can say, hey, it was God. It was always God. Yeah. So from the very beginning, yeah. I think very clearly and throughout many other passages in the word of God, I don't think we can question at all. God's view is that it's a parent's responsibility yeah. to raise their children to love and to follow the Lord. Josh, would you would you say that there's any oh. other view in scripture that 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 advocates a parent from not oh, under yeah. not, uh, not from uh outside of that responsibility? Yeah, no, they're held culpable. We yeah. are held culpable as parents. Yeah. Like uh, the like we see how like uh how children are a reflection of their parents in scripture and how like people are held accountable mm -hmm. in scripture because of the way that their children act. Oh I, oh, I think absolutely. Our children will do church and ministry largely based on the way that they watched us do church and ministry. Yeah. Now, not, that's not a blanket statement. Please no, don't take that no. as a blanket statement and say, man, I, I messed up. Therefore my kids are going to be messed up. Therefore, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, you, you got the people like, well, what about the perspective of the guy that his parents hated uh, the Lord? They hated the church. They hated all, they were all anti-religion and they found Jesus and their leader. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. But I would still argue that that kid does church and ministry still based largely on the way that they go, man, my parents didn't raise me. I'm yeah. going to make sure that I, you know. Yeah. Well, I mean, a flower can, can spring up anywhere, but yeah. it'll spring up best in good soil. So yeah. set that foundation for your children by being the example of the thing that you want them to do as they follow the Lord. Right. But that so, doesn't mean you can't grow. So absolutely, you know, you, you've got different ministries, different yeah. ministers that will say, um, don't segregate by ages. Everybody's always together. Don't, don't have youth ministry or you may have youth ministry events, yeah. but, but it's the church. Everybody's together yeah. from, from, you know, yeah. but born I, to. That doesn't, that doesn't make sense to me though, to like separate or to not separate by age. Right. I mean, how do you not, cause everyone's in a different stage of life. I mean, I even look at like, you know, where I'm at as a, as a, well, I'll be 28 here in a couple of weeks, but as a 27 year old for a little bit longer, mm -hmm. like I'm in a different stage of life than my, my friend Dylan is, who is 23, 23. Yeah. But like, that's only four years difference. Okay. Yeah, but different stages, but let's look at this perspective. Now I'm not yeah. saying, I'm not saying that I subscribe to this. Yeah. Okay. In fact, I will say I do not subscribe to this. It hit me anyway. Okay. Devil's advocate here. <laughs> no, I don't want to advocate for him. He doesn't even an advocate at all. Okay. <laughs> but here's, here's the deal. Um, you were talking about a culture yeah. where kids grew up and lived primarily in the same community all their lives. Yeah, that's true. Okay. So if you are in a culture where you, from the very beginning, are listening to the word of the Lord alongside of your parents and you don't understand something, mm -hmm. where are you going to ask questions? Probably first and foremost. Your home. You're going to ask him in the home. You're yeah. going to ask your parents. Dad, you heard the same sermon I, I heard, mm -hmm. you know? Um, it's funny. One time I remember I was preaching about um, something and I, I, uh, I would joked around with them and I said, hey, uh, normally uh, this is fine for me to, me to say this because my kids aren't sitting on the front row. Yeah. I talked about, hey, dads, when you get in the car, ask your kids. That's why I said, dads, when you enter into the room, do your yeah. kids and family tense up? Mm, geez. I because- out of either respect or out of, Oh, okay. Dad's, you know, dad's not the fun one or, or whatever. I mean, a yeah, myriad yeah, yeah. of different things. Now that yeah. wasn't saying that, that guys that, Oh, every family tenses up when the dad walked in. No, I just asked the question. Yeah. And so we got in the car and I go, okay, guys, I told all the dads to ask. So, so I'm going to ask. So again, if you're sitting there and, and the pastor preaches about yeah. anger or preaches about mm -hmm. language or preaches about, uh, course jesting or preaches yeah. about drinking or pre preaches about murder, whatever. And then those kids are <laughs> like, there's kids like, dad, you say all the time, man, I'd kill that guy. would just, would, that guy would die. Oh, okay, like, yeah, yeah. you know, like that's a, that's an okay yeah. question. Yeah. And so even as you get older mm -hmm. in this culture, in this community, yeah, you would still be there and around your parents. Yeah. 
they would still always be and should be a good resource. Yeah. Now, again, let me let me go at it from a different perspective of if we all worked in harmony with the Lord, mm-hmm. then yeah, we all ought to understand that we're an example for our kids. Yeah. And setting that up. Yeah. Right. Okay. Now, um, there's, there's, there's other sides to it, but, but th- that's where I think some people are looking at and going, no, no, this is the way it should work. Mm-hmm. And it, and it, and it could work. Yeah. Um, you and I just grew up under, under a different, um, characteristic, under a different philosophy, under a different, but it does, I don't think it makes one more right or more wrong. I think yeah. there's good, good and bad. You yeah. Know? Josh, we, we also talked about in, in Titus and in other passages, yeah. there, there's another perspective on it. What, what's that one? Well, and that's Titus too. So that's actually one I've been going through lately. Cause I've been, I just been feeling convicted about like, how am I leading those around me? My wife just got on me the other day because I was, I was being a bad influence. I just was, I was being a bad influence to someone who's not much younger than me, but just young enough younger. Uh, just like in the joke I was making, mm. it was, it was, just, it wasn't like, I mean, it wasn't like entirely lewd or something like completely off color. It was just, it was just not like a mature way to, to handle myself. And it's been convicting me lately. Like, mm. how am I being a, a responsible parent? How am I being a responsible friend to those who are like just a little bit younger than me? Yeah. Um, and that, that's been, that's been eating away at my heart and it's been putting me in a bad mood lately. And so I've been <laughs> in Titus too, uh, trying to like, kind of like weed that out. And yeah. it's, it's, it's deeply rooted, you know, because I think what it is is, sorry, I'm a little off track here, but that's okay. Um, I think what it is is sometimes I get caught up in this idea that, oh, I'm still just a kid and I'm not, right. I'm not a kid. And even when I'm, even when I was just a kid, I, I, I should be being a, a, a good example to those around me. Um, so anyway, that's been on my heart, but you know, Titus two talks about being like the, the older women helping lead the younger women and the older men helping lead the younger men. And that's why I was in Titus two. Cause it talks about, um, show yourself respect, uh, verse, let me see here. Verse, uh, seven and eight. Uh, talking about being a model of good work and your teaching, show integrity, <clears throat> dignity, and sound speech that cannot be condemned. That's mm. the one that really stuck out to me. Mm. Uh, so that an opponent may be put to shame, having nothing evil to say about us. Mm. And uh, you know, that's that's the the reputation that I want to have. But even so, like that, the Titus two is talking about being that leader in your church. Oh yeah, it's not talking about like a parent to a child, even yeah. though it could also apply to that, right? Like it says about, older men, yeah. porn to the younger men, yeah. older women, porn. To the, it mm-hmm. doesn't just mean, Hey, grandmothers pour into your daughters and pour into your granddaughters. Although yeah. that should happen as well. Absolutely. Now, Josh, you and I both come from more uh, families that have a longer heritage of faith yeah. than some other people. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And so that's, that's the situation that, that we're dealing with. Like, like, again, when, when we look at this, this, yeah. this question of should parents be involved in youth ministry? Mm-hmm. Let's just be absolutely clear. It's not a simple yes or no. No, it can't be. Just like we said about like, hey, is it too early for that kid to be involved with the youth group after he leaves? Right. It depends on the kid. Right. Now, if your church Mm -hmm. has bylaws, has preferences, has however you want to set it up, Mm -hmm. then then I think you need to submit yourself yeah. to the way that that, char- that church is operating. If you have yeah. joined that church as a member, mm-hmm. now, that doesn't mean that you can't say, hey, can we look at this? This might be an old, yeah, old rule. Yeah, you can challenge stuff. You know? Respectfully, um, of course. Respectfully. Yeah. Uh, but I'll come up. So, Josh, because we're not yeah. saying uh, one is right or wrong, we're not saying yes or yeah, no, no. it really is a, is a question of a philosophical view. Yeah, for um, sure. And so there's going to be some pros, there are going to be some cons. And yeah. because... We yeah. all naturally flow to the cons. Let's just talk about yeah. the cons. And first. I think it's better we start with like the negative first because then we can move so we can to the end positive. with the positive. Yeah, 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 yeah. I like so, that. So, actually, uh, Danny, who wrote in to us, actually said, um, and he didn't say whether it was a good thing or a bad thing, mm-hmm. um, but he did say like one of the parents in his youth group actually leads the small group, which Ooh. leads him to what could be the first con, which right. would be kids don't necessarily feel like they can be open. Because well, and, their parents are and, and I would say that to me is almost like a different. That's a different level. Level, yeah. The you know just like that about not broad. only that you're uh, you're involved in the youth group, mm-hmm. but that you're that kid's small group leader. Yeah. So I uh, I have a friend um, who is in the counseling ministry, uh-huh. 
And she actually works for an organization called Care for Pastors. Okay. I think we talked about this before. Uh, it's, a, it's a pastoral uh, ministry for, uh, for pastors because a lot of times, who does a pastor talk to when they're struggling? Yeah. Uh, but she works for the kids' side of it to talk to the teenagers and the children who are going through traumatic stuff or are going yeah. through stuff. And, and she said, it's interesting, sometimes a parent will sit in the counseling meeting with their kid. And she goes, and I can tell sometimes when that yeah. parent is like, you don't talk about this. You don't talk about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. You don't say this or that. And so, yeah, that can be a huge drawback. Well, it's like going to the doctor, like, it, sorry. This, so maybe this is another controversial one, but when you go to the doctor as a teenager, one of the things that they ask you about is, are you sexually active? Right. Well, when parents are their doctors actually actually ask for parents to leave. And then parents will be like, oh, no, it's fine. Like we, we talk yeah, about we everything. We talk but, about everything. But the well, thing is, that, yeah, if you're not there, like you say like, well, you know, then I should know about this. Yeah, maybe. But at the same time, oh yes, definitely. You shouldn't like, you should be in <laughs> oh, your, your child. Yeah. Maybe it's new, but no. But the point is, is that uh, like, if you're not being honest, right. then you can't have certain things taken care of. You can't have certain precautionary things taken right. care of. You can't speak into those things. The same thing is true about in youth group is if you're in the small group and, and there's a kid who's struggling with something that's, you know, they're embarrassed about, you know, they're not going to come up and, and talk about it in small group. They're not going to share their opinion right. in small group because right. their parents right there. No, absolutely. And I think you've just, you've got to be, you've got to be careful with yeah. that. I think, and yes, let's go back to the, the perfect harmonious situation. Mm -hmm. Should you be able to share whatever? Absolutely. Yeah. You should. And your kid ought to be able to share whatever. Absolutely. Yeah. But honestly, like I've always respected the small group leaders that would say, Hey guys, let me share you with you what I'm working on this week. Yeah. And that they were honest and maybe they yeah. feel like they can't share because they're yeah. kids. Okay. Another, another con is maybe either that parent or the kid mm -hmm. feels like the other's watching over their shoulder. Well, it might even be the case. Maybe you are a helicopter parent and the reason you want to be in youth group. Well, and that, br and that, that. brings up a good question. So yeah. sidestep question for a second, Josh, uh -huh. what if the parent was there to begin with? Well, that's what happened with my uncle Bob. Like uh, and my aunt yeah. Jody, like they were there for years. Yeah, so you should have gone to a different church. To, <laughs> to go. Well, my cousin Cassie then came up with. We were in the same grade, right. so like their daughter comes into youth group. Then no, absolutely. And, and I, I actually have a yeah. youth pastor friend of mine who stepped out of youth ministry. Oh, really? Because he said, "I don't want to be the one leading the youth ministry when my when my yeah. children get into youth group." And I was yeah. like, "Dude, like, yeah, I, I pers personally, yeah. I was like, that's why." So. Yeah. So my, I thought they did a great job. My dad's the pastor. <laughs> so should I, should he have never been yeah, the, yeah, yeah. like, that's, that's an yeah. impossible situation to yeah. deal with. I think, I think having like setting bounds of separation right. in those situations is important. And I think, and like, I, I, I can't state this clearly enough. And my, my, uh, and Jenny, uh, who was also there, the pastor's wife, um, her kids were in youth group too. Right. Like, but they did such a good job at separating those oh, things. Oh, absolutely. Like, I cannot say clearly enough how great of a job they did. Listen, there, it there, could still be a con. Listen, there were some 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 high, awesome level leaders. Uh, I say high level is in mm -hmm. my opinion of them. Uh, a guy named Don Carr, mm -hmm. uh, a guy named Doug Jardine, just, and, and their families. Um, that was a dope name. Dude. Doug Jardine. Doug Jardine. He, and here's cool the deal. Name. He was the sound guy. He would go yeah. on the winter retreat with us yeah. because he loved operating the sound. He still yeah. went to the winter. He, I, I believe, uh, Doug, because I know you're watching. <laughs> oh, <laughs> or does he? No, I don't know. Oh. <laughs> um, um, but like, um, I think he started going before his oldest daughter got into the youth group. I could be oh, wrong. Yeah. I could be wrong. Yeah. But I do know that he continued to help out with the winter retreat after his girl was not in. Yeah. And I'm like, I respect the snot out of that. Yeah. And, and listen, when you work at a church mm -hmm. that, that, that might not be a large church, you might need to have parents involved. Yeah. You know, maybe that parent said, Hey, I want to get involved in my kid's life. Yeah. And so they get involved in the preschool ministry. Yeah. And then when their kid levels up, they get involved in the children's ministry. Mm -hmm. And I know I've talked to some, some people that they're like, Oh, you're just trying to be a helicopter parent. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe, maybe not. Yeah. Maybe they're just trying to go, man, I get to engage with my kids, friends yeah. and this culture. Yeah. Um, I, I'm, I'm bleeding into the, the We're pros bleeding into already. The pros, yeah. I'm so sorry. It's, it's not um, hard to, I mean, I, I don't think it's a bad you know, thing. We're but, doing that. but again, it's like, I think sometimes when we automatically presume mm -hmm. the wrong situation, mm -hmm. 
it, we, we only end up with frustrated people. And it's not black and white either. Because it's not. You, you, if, let's say that the parent is helicopter parenting inside of that situation. They can also be doing good in that situation and be there for the right reasons. That's the best part about sanctification and the part of having your brothers and sisters, Titus 2, where you have someone maybe who's older right. in ministry right. come beside you and say, hey, you're here. You're doing an amazing job. You're also parenting too much inside of this opportunity where you have to, right. to lead. Right. And so you need to separate a little bit right. and set well, up boundaries. It's, it's kind of the same old thing of, you know, the typical, oh, you're the pastor's kid. You're going to be a troublemaker. Yeah. You're going to, well, number one, why? Why yeah. is that that you got to be the typical kid? Mm -hmm. Well, but maybe, maybe it's because nobody calls out the pastor's kids. Yeah. Now, it may be that you feel like you can't call out the pastor's kids. So again, yeah. what's the right thing to do? Talk to that parent. Yeah. So if you've got a helicopter parent in your youth group, talk to that parent. Yeah. Hey, we love having you here, mm -hmm. but here's some of the, here's some of the hardship. Yeah. And, and absolutely, you may get somebody that goes, fine, I'm not going to be involved here. That's a, there's a deeper issue there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let, let's, let's love one another to challenge one another to yeah. be more like Christ. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, uh, so Josh, what, what are the pros? The parents involved, yeah. they're, they're engaged in ministry. Mm -hmm. They're, they're hopefully serving us alongside of their kid. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, even our, our Awana club right now that we have at our church, um, it's all led by the parents of those kids who are in that club right now. Right. Like I think the pro is, is that you have passion behind and you have intentionality behind right. why they're there. Right. Every single one of them is either a parent or a grandparent. Uh, yeah, a parent or a grandparent in my mind, I'm pretty sure. Right. And they all lead with just tenacity. They lead with like intentionality. They, they have this vigor. They have this, this, like, this goal to grow and teach their children. Yeah. And not just their own kids. They're not in there and they're like, okay, we have, and they have like 40 some kids. I can't remember. It's an insane amount of kids fitting into a small space and we don't have a large church. Right. Um, but they've just, they have kids who don't even come to our church who come to this right. and it's awesome. Anyway, they'll sit down and it's not like they're just like, okay, guys, we're going into uh, our classes now. Uh, my kids come with me. Your kids, kids go, go with, with you. you. Yeah. The rest of them, uh, I guess we just stick Sorry. them somewhere. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. well, but, but Josh, let's, let's even ask a question. Okay. Do we really believe, mm -hmm. okay, we're, I'm going to make a blanket statement question. Okay. Do we really believe that just because a kid suddenly is in college or suddenly is in their third or fourth year of college mm -hmm. or, or let's say, okay, fine. We're going to say you have to graduate college. Yeah. Fine. Does that, are we honestly saying every single kid that fits into that, in that niche or that situation or that criteria is the best example? No. Yeah. We're going to hopefully take every person on a case by case basis. Yeah. Well, then we ought to do that with parents too. No, that's entirely fair and, and reasonable. And now, because we don't live in a culture mm -hmm. that grows up in one community, lives in one communi yep. community, dies in one community, yep. you've got somebody that came from, you know, a really good situation where they were serving in their local church. They were, uh, mm. you know, their kids. And, th and then they moved to your hometown and suddenly now your church is like, oh, we don't allow parents. Oh, yeah. Yeah. How do you look at that person and go, well, we were right and they were wrong. You, yeah. you, you can't. Yeah. Yeah. That's tough. And I, I think, I think it's important. Again, like we said, you need to challenge those things then know your, why you're challenging it. And then also like you should be involved enough in your church that if you go to, to your elder board or whoever's leading your church and you can say, Hey, here's my proposition right. and why right. you should be involved enough in that church that they don't go, who are you and why do you want to be involved? Right. Like, I think that's, I think that's important. So be involved in your church enough that you have an opportunity to even have that conversation. Right. And again, if you're the youth pastor, if you're the one yeah. leading, if you set the rule of you yeah. can't have parents, well then don't have kids. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. Because, because then you are in some way, shape or form, even if you're the youth pastor that steps down, hopefully you do step down into the children's ministry every once in a while and teach. Mm. Or if your kids are there, are they not allowed to show up that day? Yeah. Yeah. Like no, that's, again, that's too much. we're, 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 we're creating problems. We're creating situations. Now I will say this, um, at summer camp one time, uh, every Monday night we meet with the leaders and we, we try to go around. We say, Hey, tell us the good, the bad, the ugly, what's going on. Yeah. And I walked up to this one table of all lady leaders, mm -hmm. um, on one of our children's weeks and, and, and they're all looking at me like, walk away, walk away, walk away. And, uh, and I said, Hey ladies, uh, Hey, all, all right. We, uh, we having a good week trying to yeah. go like, okay, if I'm like, I need to move because I caught the, you know, the leader's eyes yeah. was like, 
And, uh, and this one lady goes, I have a situation I need to talk to you about. And I said, okay. And I saw the rest of them literally like put their head down. And this lady lays out the situation. Here's what she says. She goes, she goes, you need to help these kids. All these kids are babies. They're getting homesick. They're crying. They want to call home all the time and blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, I'm like, it's kids week. Like what's, what's going on? And and I said, okay. And she goes, she goes, but not my boy. Not my boy. Listen, I go down when I say goodnight to him every night and I go and I, and I'm I'm like, and I, and I look around the table and I start (laughs) to get these, these eyes of Kyle say what we all can't say. Yeah. And so I look at her and I said, I said, I said, I said, well, I said, can I just commend you as a mom? I love that you're here. And I love that you love your son enough to be here. I think that's so cool. In fact, I would be more open to more parents and the leader, like being involved, I said, but maybe, yeah, maybe, you, I mean, your kid definitely knows that you love him. He definitely knows that you're there. Yeah. Maybe some of those other kids are watching you and they're going, oh, I wish my mom was here. Well, it's not my fault that that mom didn't show up. You're right. It's not your fault that that mom didn't show yeah. up, but they didn't show up. And so maybe in a way of kindness, maybe not connect with him before he goes to bed, yeah. maybe connect with him at the end of the meeting or whatever. I don't know if she got it. I'd even go so far to say is don't connect with them for the week. Well, Be yeah, leader, yeah. But, but don't connect with him on a one-on-one. On a one-on-one basis, yeah, yeah, you know? Yeah. yeah. And, and I, and I get that. And I understand she probably was thinking, well, if I'm not going to connect with them on a one-on-one basis, why even come? And maybe that head leader was thinking exactly. But yeah. here's my thing. I, I felt like the opportunity presented yeah. itself. Mm-hmm. I thanked that lady for the ministry and the love that she has for her kid. Of course, of course. But I tried to redirect, yeah. not in a, you're doing something wrong. Cause was she doing something wrong? No, yeah. I can't say she was doing something no, 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 wrong. No, 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 no. But again, what yeah. concerned me was, was the culture of that situation mm-hmm. broken so that none of those ladies could say something to that mom? Yeah, yeah. Well, and that's the thing you, you need to, so there's a, there's a twofold thing in anything especially as you're, as you're leading or you're being part of a group that's leading, you need to do two things. You need to be looking at yourself and looking at others and seeing, am I self-aware enough to realize the things I need to work on? And then looking at others and saying, where can I, where can I encourage this person to grow as well? Yeah. And it's both in because that's, that's the iron, iron sharpens iron kind of mentality. And yeah. So <laughs> in that situation, man, you need to, you need to be willing to be reprimanded Listen, and self-aware. None of us are going to, oh, none of us are going to walk into a situation and be perfect. Just like I just smacked the, <laughs> the microphone. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Again. Yeah. Uh, none of us are going to be perfect. No, and so sure. if I walk into every situation, do I want to be wrong? Josh, do you want to be wrong in a situation? No, no. My wife just actually, so the, the whole Titus two thing, my, the thing yeah. I was like, I was like, Absolutely. Hey, leading people. She called me out and boy, that, that like, I, that's the thing. I can be self-aware at times, but the things I'm not self-aware of, if you call me out on them, I'm like frustrated. Yes. And then I have to give myself a day to come back and say, hey, you're right, but I don't like your right. Yes. Kind of thing. Right. So, yeah. And so if we can walk into situations yeah. and hopefully love one another in Christ mm-hmm. and say, hey, Josh, you missed the mark, man. You messed up. Yeah. Okay. Hey, I'm going to seek to do better. Yeah. Okay. Gr- okay. Great, Josh. I'm, I'm now going to believe the best about you. And if I ask yeah. you, if I ask you about it, it doesn't mean that I'm not believing the best about you. Yeah. It just means I care enough to ask in the same exact way that when I come across a young man or a young lady and I'm like, I don't know if they're dating the other person still, I will ask them, yeah. Hey, I don't want to be awkward and I'm yeah. not going to talk to anybody else. I'm asking, Hey, yeah. you know, Josh, are you still dating? You know, so-and-so? Yeah. No, nope, we're not. Okay, great. Thank you so much. I'm so sorry that this was awkward, but I, I'd rather hear it from you <laughs> because I don't know what's going on, yeah. you know? In that situation, we ought to love one another enough yeah. and then believe the best about one another. No, yeah, for sure. And that, that's definitely the hard part. Um, are there any other things, any other pros and cons? I'm oh, to, like, oh I'm sure we could go on. In fact, yeah. I, I would invite you guys. What what are your pros and cons? Yeah. Um, and I would, I would challenge you this. Now, we have a rule in our household. When we do uh, highs and lows of the day, mm-hmm. um, you always have to share one more high than low Good. because it's always easier to be you know, negative. Yeah. Negative. And so um, if you share with us some cons, make sure that you put at least one more pro yeah. than con. Absolutely. But genuinely, we would love to know your guys' perspective yeah, on- and, and email us. Oh, Stacking chairs pod at wol.org, just like Danny did. And you know we're not going to hit every topic that gets emailed to us, but no. we're thankful to have some topics written in because we want to talk about 
what's going on in the community of, of people who are serving in right. youth ministry. Right. Send us, send us a, a message on, uh, on Instagram yeah. or through other different yeah, avenues yeah, yeah. and levels. Well, good. We should move on to small group here. Josh, oh, I'm it's sorry, time for it. small group. Perfect. All Josh, right. So small group is a time to do what? It's a time to, I thought you were going to say the whole thing. <laughs> I know, so I, I got know. nervous. Uh, small group is a time where we talk about either something that's encouraging or discouraging, something funny that's going on, even our own personal lives or just in our youth ministry, whatever. So we just kind of hang out. It's small group. It's small group. Uh, we didn't pick a, a question. And Josh, because it's just you and I, it is a small group. It is a small group. So have you ever sat in a small group where it's just you and like one other kid? <laughs> yes. Well, no, I told you that story. I think I talked about it on the podcast. Oh, that's right. So there was a, a topic that we did and uh, it was the smallest group I've ever been a part of. It was um, it was me, uh, our, our student leader, and then another kid. And the only reason he was there was to fill in the gap. So it wasn't just the two of us. Because we were talking about a topic where his parents just weren't sure if they wanted to have him involved yet. And uh, it went pretty well. I mean, I I like to think that I can carry a conversation with myself to try and talk, you know, because I was actually uh, speaking. Right. But like doing a, doing like a, a lesson or a sermon with, with one kid, uh, like it was the same amount of talking as I would have done if there were, you know, 15 kids in front of me. But it definitely feels... Uh, a little more like awkward because you're like you know doing points you're like does anybody have you know any like right. thoughts on this or hey right. what do you think the answer to this is and you only have one kid to ask the question to. hey uh question for the room yeah. um anybody yeah. here yeah. yeah so i uh i have actually not been a small group leader for a long time the church that i work with uh right now does not do small groups as oh, really? in small groups after the lesson oh, wow. um they do they do kind of small groups on their sunday mornings okay um but I've never been in a situation where it's just, I think they would probably combine a kid to another class before they just had one teacher teach one kid. Yeah. Um, you know, but but sometimes, listen, I think it's a great way for you to get to know yeah. each of those kids that are there in that youth ministry. For sure. And, uh, and when you have those opportunities to have one-on-ones, yeah. t- take advantage of them. In fact, I would encourage you, you know, you know, say, hey, let's go grab, uh, you know, grab Two or three of the kids yeah, say, yeah, man, yeah. let's go out to go Dunkin' breakfast. or let's go grab that, this or whatever. That happened when I was a kid in, in uh, Sunday school. Dude, I remember. me too. Yeah, we'd have like two kids in there and so yeah. the teacher would be like, it was like eighth grade or something or ninth yeah. grade. And they'd be like, let's go get breakfast. I, I had a awesome. I had a Young Life leader. Uh, they moved into our area. The, the next city over had Young Life. It was big. They were trying to get it at our school. Yeah. And so a couple college kids and, and they were always like, hey man, let's 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 go out to McDonald's. And I, I hate mornings. I hate mornings. Really? I'm oh my goodness. Person. You are? Yeah. More than Josh. I realized. Um, I am now. You are now. Yeah. Oh, you're a dad. That's honestly, yeah. I'm up at like 7.30, 8 o'clock on the weekends, and I'm like already going to the dump in Home Depot and looking forward to that. Like, yeah. I, That's awesome. I know. It's it's. Josh, depressing. you, are, you are so much cooler than I. You are living out the <laughs> the passage. When I was a child, I thought like a child. So, yeah, I yeah, acted yeah, like a child. Man, and yeah. now that I'm a man, I put my childish ways behind me. You want to know when I realized that I'm like peak dad is when I got a miter saw for Christmas from my parents. And I was... I'm beyond, I'm still beyond stoked. And the first thing I did was I thought, what kind of projects can I do? I am, I'm going to start building cornhole boards and like, and like selling them. Dude, yeah. I want a cornhole set. You want a cornhole board? Yes. I'll give you one. Yeah. I'll, well, could I'll you do, give me two? Yeah, I'll so give you two. So you can play, yeah. play. I'm doing unfinished and finished uh, and then we'll do custom. Well, I don't, I don't, I want one that's finished. I don't want you, want you to finished? like, have want like, a like custom it only one? has like one leg on it. Or no, 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 no. Like either like, uh, like, you know. Hey, like sorry. I didn't poly. get it. I didn't get a chance to put the hole in it, but it's just not finished. <laughs> do a circle where yeah. if it hits there, it is there. <laughs> that's a point. I'll do it cheaper. <laughs> oh, Josh, yeah. I love these. So, last question yeah, yeah, of small group. Yeah. Okay, okay. So, as I mean, can we start doing small group like this y- instead? Y- yeah, listen. Yeah, I like so, so, your daughter is, yeah, yeah, is yeah. young, She's very, almost very young, two. almost two. Do you think you will get involved in the children's ministry when she gets involved, when she gets that old? No. And it only because I feel such a burden for the, the youth group of okay. our church. So let's fast forward. Yeah. Let's fa- fast forward 13 years. Okay. Oh, so yeah. she'll she be so she'll be 14 years old, 15, yeah. almost 15 years old. Will you? You make me cry on, I know, dude. on the mic. Listen. Ugh. Listen. I keep seeing her grow up and it's like freaking me out. <laughs> it, it goes so fast, I know. Shani. Well, and your, your oldest is almost 16. No, 15. she is 16. She is 16. She is 16. Yeah, no, I can't handle that. We, I mean, we just called her at the beginning of the show because I called my wife and she called yeah. me back and yeah. see her there even just like, she's starting to say words and yes. stuff. And, 
So you think you'll be, you'll, let's say you're still in youth ministry. Would you stay? Yes. I would stay if I were the, if I were the leader, like if in some alternate universe that I were like the youth pastor, I don't know. I'd have to kind of like, which I don't, I mean, that's, I don't think I'll be a youth pastor at that point either. Um, but I'll continue to be a lay leader. Uh, I don't know. It's hard to speak 13 years in the future, you know? Well, and it's different because you wouldn't probably be her small group leader. No, no. Because she would have a female small group leader. Well, the way we do our small, it depends on the size of the youth group too, because we only have one girl in our youth group. Oh. We've been, we've been trying to get like, like the guys were like, hey, bring like, you know, like, and then all of our guys were like, talk to women, what? No, I'm just kidding. They're, wow. they're good kids. Uh, but yeah, we don't have a lot of girls in our youth group. Awesome. Yeah. Hey, do you mind if I end this with a shameless plug? Oh, sure. Hey, guys, uh, Pursuit Camp is coming up. It begins January 20th. Uh, it is Friday, Saturday, Sunday, 44 yeah. hours uh, here Pursuit at the camp property. Is a ton of fun. Yeah, Pursuit Camp. It's our winter camp. Uh, it's our Wait, winter weekend camp. Yeah, if you're those, watching. Those are, no, no, they're, not, got, in, they're not, old, in the oh, oh, they're like, not in the shot. They're not in the shot. I accidentally put them too high. I'll put them lower. Oh, that's okay. I did it intentionally because Pursuit Camp. Listen, I love it. I appreciate yeah. it. Hey, but we would love to have you join us. We do, we do six weekends. Uh, like I said, starting the weekend of January 20th, mm-hmm. the last two weekends in January, all, all four weekends in February. Yeah. Uh, hey, here's what we want to do. We want to help your students and you passionately pursue, get it, Jesus Christ in a deeper nice. relationship with him. But we also want to help you to have tools to go reach your world. But listen, yeah. invite the kids that don't know Christ. We share the gospel. Yeah. We give an opportunity for them to respond to the gospel. In fact, let me say yeah. this. If you know an unsaved student that you would like to get to Pursuit Camp, you contact us. We'll get them there for free. Yep. Uh, email at stackingchairspot at wool.org and there we'll make go. sure that it gets passed on. Um, no, but uh, Word of Life winter camps. I mean, I grew up, or not grew up, I went to snow camp for years when I was up uh, in New York and then pursuit camp for the past three or four years, just being able to like see it even yeah. from a distance and at times help and stuff. It is so much fun. Like Thanks. it genuinely is, is such a blast and it's beneficial. Like, gospel present presented and you get this time to kind of have a respite, you know, yeah. as a youth group. And yeah. so highly recommend not a shameless plug at all. I mean, guess not so, a shameful shame, plug. It's yeah. not a, it's, whatever. Hey guys, this has been stacking chairs, <laughs> youth ministry podcast about all things, youth ministry, whether you're involved in youth group, uh, in, in youth camp, <laughs> whatever. Pursuit camp. Pursuit camp. Hey, uh, we love uh, you. Yeah. Remember, have a conversation with your leaders. Show Jesus to somebody today. Amen. Yeah. And Danny, thanks so much for reaching out to us. Guys, again, email us, check us out on our social media platforms. And uh, yeah, that's about it. Yeah. Just above all, don't forget, stack those chairs. <laughs>